Have you ever wondered how Socrates, one of the greatest philosophers, viewed sex? A fascinating question indeed. We're embarking on a journey through the ages, scrutinizing the philosophy of sex from the time of Socrates to the present day. Let's start with Socrates, a cornerstone of Western philosophy. He had a rather unconventional viewpoint on sex, especially for his time. For Socrates, sex was not about mere physical pleasure. Oh no, it was something much more profound a pathway to wisdom. In the conversations documented by his student Plato, Socrates often spoke about the transformative potential of sexual desire. He believed that sexual love, or eros, as it was known in ancient Greece, was a powerful force that could lead one to the realm of the divine. Imagine that, the act of sex being a conduit to the divine. It's a far cry from the modern perception of sex as primarily a physical act, isn't it? Socrates proposed that sexual attraction was an impetus that could drive individuals to strive for intellectual and spiritual growth. A provocative idea, certainly, but one that was well received in ancient Greek society, where the line between the physical and the philosophical was often blurred. The ancient Greeks viewed sex as an integral part of their culture, an aspect of life that could not and should not be separated from their quest for wisdom and enlightenment. This perspective, as unique as it was, set the stage for a myriad of viewpoints on sex that were to emerge in the centuries that followed. So, for Socrates, sex was more about intellectual stimulation rather than mere physical pleasure. A curious case indeed. Let's delve deeper into this fascinating topic in the scenes to follow. Now let's journey to the Middle Ages where the view on sex was drastically different. The Middle Ages, a period stretching from the 5th to the 15th century, was a time when the church held sway over many aspects of life, including sex. This era, marked by feudalism, chivalry, and the Crusades, also saw the Church's teachings permeate every corner of society, casting a long and influential shadow over the intimate lives of people. Sexuality was viewed through a lens of morality heavily influenced by religious doctrine. The Church, a dominant force, dictated that sex was a sinful act, a remnant of original sin, a transgression against divine law unless it was performed within the sanctity of marriage and solely for procreation. This perception was deeply entrenched in the societal fabric, instilling a sense of guilt and sin associated with sexual pleasure. The dichotomy of sin and virtue when it came to sex was a common theme in literature and art of the time, reflecting the pervasive influence of the church's teachings. This era also saw the birth of the concept of courtly love, a form of romantic expression that emphasized nobility and chivalry. But even in this idealized portrayal of love, Sexual desire was often depicted as a tormenting force, an uncontrollable passion that could lead one astray from the path of righteousness. The Church's influence also extended to laws and regulations. Adultery, fornication, and other sexual sins were severely punished, often with public humiliation or even death. This further entrenched the perception of sex as a potentially dangerous and sinful act. However, it is important to remember that this was not a monolithic period. Different regions, classes, and individuals may have varied in their attitudes toward sex, sometimes significantly. But the overarching narrative was one of sex as a necessary evil, a pathway to procreation that was fraught with moral peril. The Middle Ages painted sex in a layer of sin and guilt, a stark contrast from Socratic times. For instance, in Eastern religions like Hinduism, marriage was regarded as divine bond over different lifetimes, which shouldn't be broken. Sacrifice over personal pleasure was of paramount importance. The most radical form of it was concept of sati, which necessitated a wife to voluntarily burn herself in the pyre of her dead husband. Let's now traverse to a different realm, the Islamic perspective on sex, which regarded sex as one of the blessings from God for contentment of human soul and introduced some liberating concepts. Islam, a religion that emerged in the seventh century, brought forward a view of sex that was remarkably progressive for its time. Unlike the prevailing views, Islam positioned all acts leading to harmony and peace in the world, including sexual intercourse, as forms of worship. The sanctity of marriage was emphasized not as obligation, but as a contract, a consensual agreement between two parties. This shift in perspective saw women not as passive recipients, but as active participants in the sexual act. Women's rights were protected with provisions for them to express dissatisfaction with their husbands and even to seek divorce. Remarkably, in Islam, sexual dissatisfaction could be a ground for divorce sought by women, who could then 
proudly seek another man in marriage, fully allowed and supported by Islamic laws. Marriage in Islamic philosophy was seen as a security for women, requiring a contract that included the responsibility of the male to look after the well-being of the woman and any potential offspring. Women were given the right to decide whether or not to bear a child, a concept far ahead of its time. An anecdote of the Holy Prophet further emphasizes this idea. He said, you cannot deposit sperm into a woman's womb unless she's agreed for that, or you seek permission at the time of ejaculation. It is her body, she has the right. Ponder over it. However, over time, these liberating concepts were subdued by male dominance in Islam, molding the teachings into rigid behaviors similar to other religions. Despite the progressive concepts introduced by Islamic sexual philosophy, societal pressures and male dominance have unfortunately led to a dilution of these ideas. In this scene, we have explored the Islamic perspective, which brought forward a progressive view on sex. But, unfortunately, these ideas were repressed over time. Fast forward to the Enlightenment era, where sex was seen under a new light. This was a time when intellectual and philosophical revolutions were sweeping across Europe, and the way people thought about sex was not exempt from this transformation. Enter the philosophers like Immanuel Kant and Voltaire. These thinkers started to challenge the traditional views that had dominated for centuries. Kant, for instance, was known for his moral philosophy that centered around the concept of duty. He believed that sexual desire was morally acceptable only within the confines of a loving, committed marriage. On the other hand, Voltaire, a beacon of enlightenment thinking, was more liberal. He argued that sexual pleasure was a natural part of human experience and that there was no reason for it to be shrouded in shame or guilt. Their philosophies echoed throughout the Enlightenment era, pushing society to rethink the role of sex. It was no longer seen as just a means of procreation serving a purely biological purpose. It started to be recognized as an act of love, an expression of deep emotional connection between two individuals. The Enlightenment era also saw the emergence of the idea of sexual pleasure, challenging the long-standing belief that sex was purely functional. Pleasure, they argued, was not a sinful indulgence, but a natural part of the human experience. This new perspective encouraged people to embrace their sexuality rather than suppress it, marking a significant shift in societal attitudes. But it was not just about pleasure. The philosophers of the Enlightenment era also emphasized the importance of consent and mutual respect in sexual relationships. They argued that sex should be a shared experience based on love and mutual understanding, rather than an act of domination or control. The Enlightenment era opened up a new perspective where sex was seen as an expression of love and pleasure. This was a major step forward in the philosophy of sex, paving the way for the more liberal attitudes that would emerge in the centuries to come. As we ventured into the dawn of the 20th century, the philosophy of sex experienced a radical metamorphosis. The 20th century was an epoch of deep-seated change marked by seismic shifts in societal and cultural perspectives on sex. The sexual revolution of the 1960s and 70s, a potent concoction of counterculture, the ethos of free love, and the introduction of the contraceptive pill, was at the epicenter of it all. This era amplified previously subdued discussions about sex, giving them a louder resonance in public spaces. This change was not abrupt but was a gradual evolution propelled by a burgeoning sense of individualism and personal liberty. The sexual revolution defied conventional norms, dismantling the sexual morality that had long been enforced. It signaled a shift towards candid discussions about sex, championing sexual emancipation. Alongside the sexual revolution, the feminist movement emerged, taking a stance against the objectification and subjugation of women. Feminism held a crucial role in reforming societal norms advocating for sexual parity, women's rights, and autonomy over their bodies. It brought the issue of consent to the forefront, thereby redefining the philosophy of sex. Subsequently, the rise of the LGBTQ plus rights movement occurred. This movement was a tussle for acknowledgement, a tussle for acceptance. This movement challenged society's heteronormative structure. Rights and acceptance of individuals regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity, became a focus of this movement. Yet the comprehension of this movement still lacks clarity. Intersex individuals who face genuine concerns regarding their societal identity have to be assigned to one sex or the other. 
a process that may involve conditional upbringing and even surgical corrections, to fit a child into one broader group. On the opposite end of the spectrum, individuals who identify as transgender from a psychological perspective create ambiguity in the definitions of the human race. No other species possesses such a vast range of thought and adaptability as humans. This ambiguity could potentially warp the societal family structure. The future implications of this are uncertain, but it seems likely that traditional family values and constructs will no longer remain the same. The 20th century punctuated a revolutionary shift in the philosophy of sex. Today, the philosophy of sex is more diverse and inclusive than ever before. As we navigate through the 21st century, a powerful wave of change has swept across our perceptions of sex and sexuality. Our understanding has broadened, stepping beyond the binary definitions of the past to a spectrum of sexual orientations and identities, for better or worse, only time will tell. Yet, as we grapple with these changes, new debates have emerged. The topic of sex education, for instance, has become a hotbed of controversy. While many advocate for comprehensive sex education, emphasizing the need for young people to understand their bodies, rights, and responsibilities, others resist, citing concerns about age appropriateness and moral values. Simultaneously, the concept of consent has taken center stage. The mantra, no means no, has evolved into yes means yes, underscoring the necessity of affirmative consent in any sexual interaction. The significance of this shift cannot be understated. It has sparked conversations, shifted perspectives, and most importantly, empowered individuals to assert their boundaries. Then there's the rise of sex positivity, a movement that champions safe, consensual sex and challenges the societal stigmas attached to it. It encourages open dialogue, promotes sexual health, and celebrates sexual diversity. In a world where shame and guilt have long been associated with sex, this movement is a breath of fresh air, a beacon of liberation. However, these discussions and debates are far from settled. They continue to evolve, shaped by cultural shifts, scientific advancements, and societal attitudes. They reflect our collective struggle to reconcile centuries-old norms with contemporary realities. In the modern day, the philosophy of sex continues to evolve, embracing diversity and inclusivity. As we move forward, we carry the wisdom of the past, the challenges of the present, and the hope for a future where every individual is free to express their sexuality without fear or judgment. What does the future hold for the philosophy of sex? A tantalizing question. Consider the impact of technology. Virtual reality, for instance, has the potential to transform our sexual experiences, blurring the lines between the physical and the digital. This could redefine our understanding of intimacy, pleasure, and connection. How will we navigate this brave new world where the virtual and the physical intertwine? Then there's the role of artificial intelligence. As AI becomes progressively more sophisticated, it's not far-fetched to imagine a future where human-like robots become potential partners. This raises fascinating ethical and philosophical questions. What does consent mean in the context of AI? Can a robot truly reciprocate feelings of love and desire? And if so, what does this mean for our understanding of these emotions? Meanwhile, societal norms continue to evolve. The rigid binaries of the past are giving way to a more fluid understanding of gender and sexuality. This shift is likely to impact our sexual philosophies. Science, too, will inevitably play a role. As we gain deeper insights into the biology and psychology of sex, our philosophies will need to adapt. We're likely to see a more nuanced discourse that recognizes the complexity and diversity of human sexuality. Then there are the ethical questions. As technological and societal changes push the boundaries of what's possible and acceptable, we'll need to grapple with issues of privacy, consent, and equity. These debates will shape the future philosophy of sex, just as they have in the past. In the midst of all this, one thing is clear. The future of sex philosophy will be anything but static. It will be a dynamic, evolving conversation that reflects the changing landscape of human experience and understanding. As we look towards the future, the philosophy of sex promises to continue its fascinating evolution. In the realm of scientific exploration, we've discovered that the tiniest trait within a species can determine its rise to dominance, precipitate its downfall, or even seal its fate in extinction. Now ponder this. Could the nuances of our sexual behaviors shape the very future of humanity? Our intimate expressions might emerge as a source of strength, 
or veer into a peril so profound that humanity risks fading into the forgotten annals of Earth's diverse life forms. An errantly launched arrow ascending into the sky possesses the inherent potential to descend perilously upon the shooter's own head. These modern behaviors and concepts, along with their potential impacts on society, warrant a dedicated episode. Stay tuned for an in-depth exploration.